Hello! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Game Guru Twitch broadcast. Uh, I bet you're wondering why it takes me a whole three minutes from when the recording starts to when I actually start speaking. Well, I give a little bit of time for the uh, the advertisement at the start of Twitch. If you've not signed up for the, I think it's called the Turbo subscription or some such thing, then you get a little bit of advertisement at the beginning before the uh, uh, the Twitch broadcast actually starts, which you can skip, of course. Uh, but if the advertisement is particularly good, then you might want to watch it, and then only when it's finished, then join the broadcast. So I wanted to give you every opportunity to get all of the broadcast and not miss the first five minutes of it. And the reason I'm going on and on about that is there actually is a video I actually have uh, the Twitch on another screen, so I can see what you see. And it's going on and on forever. I mean, this is four minutes in counting, this advert. Um, it's sort of a, a walkthrough. It looks like a walkthrough. All the cutscenes from a computer game. So it doesn't really have to say what it is yet. <laughs> it's just a lot of advertising. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk about today. I don't want to talk about advertising. Ah, it's advertising uh, World of Warcraft Legion. So there you go. A nice four minute um, advertisement released in summer 2016. Looks pretty good. Graphics look nice. So we'll be checking that out again. And next year. So, what I want to talk to you about today is headshots. It's something that's been requested for, oh, I don't know, about over two years. And uh, it really was down to me to add the additional pieces of code which would make it possible. So, after the release of the performance update, which has gone down very well, we've decided to turn our attention to smaller things, things that can be squeezed into a series of micro updates before the next big update, which will be DirectX 11. So there's been a lot of activity around this, you know, what's, what's, what, what we're going to add, what we're going to leave, that sort of thing. We've added quite a lot already, and uh, Headshots was one of the first things I've added, and it's really, really cool. So before I go into the how, I'm going to show you the what. And the best way to do that is to run Game Guru. I'm actually running my dev version, so if it does explode, you're using a internal developer version that's not been sanctioned for release. And so if it does go wrong, that's fine, that's normal. This is what we live with every day as developers. So, headshots. Well, you're going to need something to shoot. So we'll drop in a soldier. We also need a start marker where we're going to start the game. And we're going to need a weapon. So we'll give ourselves the court 1911, 100 bullets and 10,000 health. And we'll make sure that we save that out. And then when we run, what we want to do is a nice accurate headshot and it should uh, down the character in one. It's just a testament to how good I am at this. There you go. <laughs> it didn't like that at all. He's holding his head in shame. So there you go, that's a one shot kill. And just to prove that uh, I haven't just messed about with the player's health, sorry, the enemy's health, I'll actually shoot him in the leg and he won't go down quite as quickly. So it took three shots to actually take him out when I shoot him in the knee. Now, I could have just hacked in a headshot, you know, uh, an internal scan of the model, figure out what the head is, and then actually return that information and say, boom, instant kill. But I thought, no, this is the eve of um, expansion in our lower system. We want people to have more control, so less hard coded, more stuff inside the lower script. So what better way to start that than with this? as one of our very first features after the major performance update. So what I'm going to show you is how that was all possible. So the very first thing you want to check out is the script. So the character will run a, a Lua script called AI underscore soldier dot Lua. And what we can do, we can look for that script in the script bank, which is in the files folder. So AI soldier dot Lua which opens up my little text editor showing this Lua script. You can see it's quite sophisticated, lots of things. Um, the, so there's lots of stuff you can actually do in script to actually control the behavior of your characters. But the thing that I added, um, you can find here, these four lines of code. Now it wasn't just a case of, oh yeah, you just added four lines of code and you got headshots, no. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff going on in the background that made this possible. And one of the first things I want to reveal is that rather than 
having a flag that gets returned to you which says yes you've hit the head what it actually does it returns the name of the limb that the bullet hit so it doesn't have to be a character it could be anything anytime you shoot any entity that has limbs that has frames inside the model and those frames have names it will return that name as the name of the element within that model that you hit so you can imagine a character has lots and lots of frames it has legs and knees and hands and feet and body and all the rest of it and the head and the neck are two separate things and fortunately um, at some point in the name of, of the head the words H-E-A-D the letters were used so I know that as providing the word head appears somewhere in that description for that particular frame for that limb within the model then I know I've actually hit the head and the way you do that in Lua, Lua has some built-in string commands string.find is a pretty cool thing it will actually return the character position of any string you're looking for within a larger string so if I had something like um, my head is on fire as a string and then I just went out and looked for the head part it would return the number of ca characters where it first encountered the head and so anytime it will return anything other than null you know it's actually found that string head and so if you look inside here this is the string was submitting as the big string and the little one that's what we're looking for and within that you've got string lower now what that does it converts the name whatever it is now remember models can come from anywhere and be called anything and contain frames with any kind of name so you really want to sort of standardize what you get um, because this is case sensitive this so what you do is you take whatever is returned from entity E limb and return it all as lowercase so if it's upper capital letters it turns it all to lowercase so it's a lot easier to compare and then you can use lowercase h e a d for the comparison so that as i say brings us right down to this new one you didn't get this before limb hit didn't exist it doesn't exist in the performance update it will exist in the next update and behind the scenes what it actually does it's uh, when a bullet hits a model it scans the model it figures out that the bullet ray probably entered in and around a certain set of limbs then it interrogates the polygons of that limb it even um, does a small scale animation because if you think about it all the animations that go on in the characters in Game Guru there are shaders they actually animate on the GPU for performance reasons but because the animations sort of moving the vertices all around even models that say have take flight and have wings they're completely in a different place from their starting posture so you have to do a little bit of polygon recalculation to figure out whether you've got an accurate hit detection between the bullet ray and the polygon and that polygon is part of whatever piece of anatomy you want to detect in this case the head so that's what it does in the background it scores a hit on a on a on a on a model it interrogates that for you it produces oh you've definitely hit this limb and then it sends that to the Lua system so then you can interrogate that and uh, as I said in a, I think it was a team call this morning I said it's not just about headshots anymore you could actually shoot somebody in the leg and then cause them to have a limp a left legged limp or a right leg limp you could have a, a little end of level boss with a particular limb that's like a sensitive spot like a weak spot that you've got to keep shooting for and then of course if you add your own characters, your own animations you can actually have some shields go up like a great big iron shield that covers the weak spot so you can only hit it at certain points and there's other things like uh, let's say you've got a chest of drawers like a big bureau and you've got five drawers in it you could simply just put the crossover over, do a, a bullet ray test it'll actually return right you've hit draw number one, draw number two and then you can trigger different animations to actually open each draw in turn if you were actually doing a, an adventure game where you want to interrogate or explore objects in your game so as you can see rather than just do a hacking headshot gimmick we've actually gone for the whole Monty we've basically said look we're going to give you the power so you can interrogate entities as you see fit so I figured that's the way to do it and that's sort of the style I'll be approaching these new features if there's a possibility to open it up and not hard code it and give it to the power of the lower scriptures then that's what I'm going to do and having gone past that 
condition, it only takes seven minutes to explain, it gets a little bit easier. There's a command set entity health zero. Anyone guess what that does? Yes, it sets the health of whatever entity has just been hit to zero and they collapse on the spot. And this is a new command. This is the command that was added to accompany the limb hit parameter that's now available in G Entity, and that's called Reset Limb Hit. Because what happens is you could shoot a limb, but you may not be running the script at that time. Maybe you're having a bit of a rest, maybe it's out of shot, maybe you've sniped or something like that. The script may not be able to pick it up if you just flashed it up immediately. Hit and then done. So what it does, it leaves that flag set. So limb hit will always store the last limb that was hit. So you can have that sort of a, you don't have to add additional variables in your Lua script. You can just leave that alone. So limb hit will just always store the last hit, uh, last limb that was hit. And then when you want to make sure that you can um, control it, like hit one and then do something and then reset, then hit something else and then do something and then reset, you need a way in which to erase the property at limb hit. And that's what reset limb hit does. It actually erases it and so it's a null again and so that won't keep getting called. So that's how you can, let's say you had a big end of a bad guy with several weak spots. You know, you have to hit the set of head and then you've got to hit some sort of power jewel that's <laughs> stuck in the shield or something, or whatever it happens to be. So you can create some quite sophisticated strips now, uh, scripts now with those two commands. So that is the, the crux I've wanted to introduce. I've got a couple of more um, nice things that I can show whilst I'm here. I wanted to sort of focus in on trying to squeeze all the broadcast into half an hour this time because we keep saying, oh, well, this broadcast is only really scheduled for 30 minutes and then we witter on for a whole hour. And so um, I think we've got a possibility of actually hitting the 30 minutes this time. So uh, I'm just going to go on to the chat. I've just been reading uh, some, some comments. It seems uh, everyone likes it so far, which is great. I hope you like the flexibility. Um, I'll start at the top of the chat window. Rave, who's moderating our session today, says boom headshot. Just in capitals. So that must mean something to someone. And Keith provides, uh, now we need a heavier bullet, like a .50 cal, and line up two guys for a headshot. <laughs> it's a good point. I mean, would that work? Two characters lined up together, would it work? Well, let's find out, shall we? We don't want this guy moving about, so we'll put him on neutral. And then we'll need two of him. So we'll extract this guy. And then we'll have two of him. Like that. And we here. Like this. Save. I don't think it'll work. I think it, um, the bullet will actually stop on its nearest target. But, you know... They're all lined up, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so if we do this. No. <laughs> Quite rarely, the bully does actually stop the first one. But you do have a point, actually. A 0 0.5 cal calibre bullet should pretty just slice through quite a lot of material before it actually stops. So, why would we do that? Maybe something in the weapon settings rather than on the AI. So, let's say, uh, where is it? The. Uh, Oh, we can't find it now. I'm looking for it. That gun I've just got. Mm. It's right. Oh, there it is. Colt 1911. So if we click on this gun and go to properties, we already have a number of weapon settings. We've got the damage it can do, the accuracy, reload quantity, fire iterations, how many bullets come out at the same time, its range. Drop off is a really clever thing. There is actually bullets do actually fall out the air over certain distances, so you can control that. And whether you actually use a dynamic light to flash the scene when you fire your gun. What we might have is another property in here which says whether the bullet, maybe as a mod modifier rather than just an on off, the amount of slowdown a bullet will receive when it hits something. So if you did it at 100, it would be 100% stopped. If you did it at 50%, it would pass through the first and then hit a second, so 250% equals 100, so then it will stop. But if we did like one, it would be a bullet that could pass through 100 targets before it actually gets stopped. 
so that'd be a nice property so I hope someone will email me to remind me of that because I probably won't because I'll have gone on to my brain will have gone on to something else uh, Sync Commander suggests double damage yes you can certainly definitely do that instead of just saying set entity health to zero you can actually work out an appreciable amount of damage that you want to apply and you can then tie that in with some superpowers let's say you collect upgrades for your weapon now you can actually put it in here as part of your lure system uh, Keith uh, Cal asks would it be possible to make it so that each section of the body would take a predefined amount of damage that could be changed by the user perhaps by a dialogue box or some such thing something for a future update perhaps um, as you can see because you can detect individual limbs and you can set the health deductions willy-nilly you could do that right now the problem is only scripters would really have a good time of it everybody who just wants to use a drag and drop system would be left in the cold really all they would be able to have is oh well, I can do a headshot but that's kind of it um, how we go about assigning the let's call them modifiers for each limb I'm not sure uh, so I'd be I'd be interested in any suggestions on how we do that. You know, we've got to kind of have a balance between making it very easy to make games and not sort of fall into the trap of making it so convoluted that a brand new user when they go in will just get really confused because there's now a million buttons and weapons and dialog boxes and things like that. So looking for some inspiration on how we can keep it easy but give you that kind of power without resorting to scripting which of course solves all problems um, something for the future future perhaps definitely absolutely I th I've seen it in a lot of games not only about you know different parts of the body for different strengths but also weapons that can be upgraded in different ways you know you could increase the ability to which it pierces armor or it goes through energy shields and stuff like that these are other areas that we want to expand on and still make it easy to create your game so we're, we're definitely doing that, we just have to decide um, the best time to do it. Or it just shows up as number one on the voting board and then we have to do it in its entirety. Um, yeah, uh, Keith uh, suggests an alien boss with uh, his heart in the upper right shoulder. Yeah, so you could hide the heart, you've got to figure out where it is. So it's a pretty cool feature. Uh, Pirate Mike agrees, it's a nice addition. Uh, Ravy asks... Um, <laughs> yeah, Ravi asks, if someone shot your midriff, it would just bounce off. I don't know who that was targeted at, but I can, I can see the humour of it. Yeah, if you shot, say, that fat zombie in the, uh, in, in, in the chest, maybe you could have a modifier which says it actually doesn't do anything. Um, so you can have a lot of fun. I mean, you can take existing characters now and then... Um, just prop, uh, pop up, you know, what the uh, the limb is, and look at the name, and then maybe you can create some scripts which do some interesting things. And as I said before in previous broadcasts, there's lots of hidden animations in our characters. We only use a fraction, maybe about 20%. There's a lot of animations that are still to come online, and you can explore those right now and maybe um, trigger them with with these new um, limb detection commands. Uh, okay, so scrolling down the list, I think we're getting some more questions going. Yes, we are. Um, Moneris asks, what's the email for suggestions for the nth time? I shall write it down this time, promise. It's really easy. It's lee at thegamecreators.com. L W E at, and then the game creators, all one word, dot com. C O M. Um, so that's the easiest way you can get in touch because it comes straight to me and then I can either add it to a list or ignore it or implement it immediately um, we're in that stage now where we've not got some great big bottleneck project around our neck we can actually do all these little features it's just a case of you know squeaky wheel gets the grease so please do make your suggestions repeatedly uh, and scene commander suggests quite rightly you can also make your suggestions on the voting board we collect every single one and then we can uh, conglomerate them we basically combine them together with suggestions that have also been made and then we weight them so we actually know how many people will be suggesting the same thing so we'll probably give it a bit more detail because there's a lot of interest in that 
Got a question mark from Wormer. Can you find limb names in the X file, but how do you find limb names in binary X files? Yeah, great idea. Binary X files is just a, a lot of gobbledygook. There's two things you can do. You can just load up the X file in a tool called Asset Importer. That will show you the limb names. You can also use Blender, which is a free modeling tool on Steam. Just import to the X file, and then you can see the limb names that way. The one I prefer is I write a little script where I can set the character to be a dummy and then I can actually shoot and get the limb name and I can demonstrate that right now actually I wouldn't be surprised if I've already written it, no I haven't okay so the best thing we can do is this forget these commands uh, actually we're on AI soldier at the moment and we don't really want to change that so if we just close that down without changing it open up AI neutral as you can see, we've got a similar command here. But when we shoot, instead of killing the character, which is very unfair because he can't defend himself, let's just show the raw contents of that field. Yeah. So you can imagine what's going to happen now. If I run, um, cancel out of that. We only need we only need one enemy. Save and run. So now what's going to happen is when I shoot a limb of our character, it's going to replace the prompt at the bottom of the screen. So if I do head, see, that's its actual name, bit01 underscore head. Um, and we're making it lowercase, we're only looking for H-E-A-D letters and then we know it's the head. But look if I shoot the arm. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> we probably need to make him in invincible or at least have a lot more... Uh, health. So we'll give him 10,000 health. Try again. <laughs> right. So let's see all the health and text is gone. Right, can anyone guess why that's not showing any limbs? Well, I won't let you guess too long because, see, it only responds to this. It only responds to when it actually got the head. See, so we can make this a little bit easier along the lines of if that is anything other than null, yeah, save and then run that because before it would only actually do the prompt if it actually met the condition that it was ahead. So now we shoot the arm, see, forearm, upper arm, spine, thigh, calf, foot finger. See the detail? You've got um, the head. And you'll find that the back is made up of several segments. There's a, a span one, the span two. I think there's another one somewhere. Pelvis. That's another one that's connecting the span to the legs. And so imagine you have a set of your own custom animations from your own model. And your model can react differently based on all these different shoot points. It's entirely up to you now how your character is going to react. All for want of two additional commands. So I just scrolly scrolly. So yeah, that's that's how I would look for the uh, the limb names. So hopefully that helped Wormer. Um, okay. Uh, Pirate Mac said Sim Commander made an app a while ago to show limb names so you can sort of dig around in the forum and see if you can find that or maybe it can be posted here in the link uh, uh, VIG says he's had to log in with Facebook because his other account is not working that's fine, we can, we can hear you fine, that's no problem um, Sync Commander confirms he no longer has the source code for the app, so it doesn't exist anymore. But you can, like I said, you can use the limb names that I've just shown you how to do that. Uh, Keith C writes, uh, you could have it like the entity importer, bring it up. It would show a silhouette of the character with a head, body, four limbs. Each limb would then be represented by a number box on the side. Then you export that modified character. Yep, I like the sound of that. Let's have a bit of a walk through character creator so it would be um, 
probably a cross between Entity Importer and this character creator. So you can bring in an entity that you're going to make into a character, and then it brings it into something like this. But instead of actually being able to change, um, you know, between all these, let's see if we have a, this guy, or maybe a stripy face. Instead of where well, you can change the limbs, the actual model's done. It's been done in a 3D modeler, it's been animated, it's been brought in, and then becomes the point of, say, highlighting a particular limb, getting the name, assigning it a value, picking another limb, giving it a name, and you can just go through. And there's another conversation I actually have been talking um, on the st on the Steam forums, getting some feedback from there, about actually scrolling through the animations of an imported model and then assigning those animation sequences with names. So in addition to be able to detect limbs in your Lua script, you can actually trigger off set animation pieces just by saying, you know, play animation walk or play animation sit down or something like that. And maybe the tool could be used for that as well. So it could be a multi-purpose import, then create attributes and then export it so Game Guru can use it, which would be a great middle uh, point for artists to prepare models that they've created, assign these extra attributes, and then when you actually use the final product in Game Guru by dragging and dropping, you now have access to all this extra information. And maybe not even lower script, maybe just selecting in a character and then choosing the animations by name. You know, I want this uh, character to use this animation and that animation and use this profile for its various limb damages. It just gives you a, a more flexibility. So yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. It needs to show up in the voting board. I think we can't go off on a tangent when we're talking about UI stuff. That means new dialogues, we've got to design it, we've got to make sure it works with everything else. It's quite a big job. It's not like adding a few lower commands, it's quite a lot more than that. So it will have to appear on the voting board. So uh, if that suggestions have been made, then definitely make a post and then we'll add it to the list. Um, Paramount suggests you can post those details on the new forum. Yeah, go for it. Um, how would we call those CSI dash animation calls from the FPE file? Uh, you, you wouldn't really call the animations from the FPE, not really. The FPEs, think of the FPE, which is the entity profile file. It's the file that describes what the entity is and all of its attributes. It stores all of the fixed animations that we know about inside the FPE, which can then be used by the automated AI system. That's all that's for, used by the automated AI system. If you've got your own animation sets and you've described them and given them names, then inside Lua you'll just be able to call those. Right now you have to kind of do it the hard way, which is a command like um, set animation frames 100, 200, and then play animation like so. That's how you do it right now. It's not, I think it's play character animation actually, or something along those lines. So you see you actually have to do the numbers manually and then trigger the animation off. Um, whereas what I'm probably suggesting as a play character, in fact character might be a bit ambiguous, so animation and then e comma walk. So that would be a better way to actually do that was right now you have to do that and if you wanted to actually play some of those animations that are specified in the FPE as part of your Lua script then you just have to go into the FPE find the start and end frames and then bring them back into your Lua script and run them and see what they look like that's the only way to actually connect those two worlds together right now um, I think I've got a question from uh, uh, Vir Virgin uh, Lee can you send me an address where I can upload my beta test level the problem was the light up selection red or green the best way I know how is have yourself a Google account go to Google Drive and then do the create button and it will say upload file or file upload and you can use that to upload quite a large file and then once it's finished uploading it will give the option to share so click the share button and enter my uh, Google mail address which is leebambatgc at gmail.com I think you can also do Lee at thegamecreators.com as well. And then it will actually send an email to me. I click a button and then I can get the whole file. That's the quickest way to actually send me large files that are over 20 megabyte. You can't email me anything over 20 megabytes. Google rejects it. 
Um, Keith C reminds everyone, don't forget, if you have a question, we have a chat feature on the Game Guru site. We can steer you in the right direction or handle any issues you are having. If we are not online, just leave us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Absolutely right. This broadcast only is, is live once a week for less than an hour. So it's not really the only opportunity you have to ask these questions. We've got two forums. We've got the main uh, Game Guru website. And as soon as you go to the main website, you'll see forum in the top right corner. You click that and ask a question. You can also actually go to the community hub on Steam. So if you go to the Game Guru product page, you'll see Community Hub, click that, and then that will get you to a discussion board where you can ask questions there as well. And you can also email our technical support, which is also available, support at thegamecruisers.com, or you can email me directly at lee at thegamecruisers.com. Basically, there is a lot of help available, should you need it. But we've tried to make the software as intuitive as possible so you don't need it that much. At least that's been our experience. <laughs> AO5 Twin said you killed him. Yeah. Alas, most of the games that you can create in Game Guru largely involve a weapon and someone to shoot. Um, we are adding more adventure elements, cartoony elements, puzzle elements, things like that. I've also seen some other um, experiments, some game genre experiments that, <laughs> that are really cool, but you know, but I'm not going to talk about them yet because I'm going to let the original authors release those in their own time. But it's really great to see what people are doing in the lower scripts these days. Um, VRG asks, I have some scroll problems in the editor with big levels not moving smooth, but it, yeah, that's a little tweaky bug that managed to sneak through the net. If you actually move the mouse pointer off the 3D view and into the IDE somewhere, then you can scroll fast and nice. If you actually move the cursor into your 3D edit view and the ed editor uh, is filled with a very complicated level, it will start to chug based on your system specification. That's because it's doing an inordinate number of ray casts and it doesn't need to. So they're going to add a, we're adding a little bit of code which will skip the unnecessary ray casts and you should get all your speed back in the editor with the next update. So watch out for that one. Um, yeah, everyone's agreeing that they got that little slowdown. Yeah, everyone's don't need to reproduce that for me. Everyone's getting it. We all know about that one. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a nice little trick where if you just hold down shift, um, and then use the right mouse button to do free flight. You can actually generally move a lot faster. But that's just a workaround until we actually eliminate this raycast bug. Um, VR Jim confirms his attachment is 500 megabytes. Yes, you can't email 500 megabytes. Use Google Drive, you'll be re. Oh, great. Well, Ravi just reports that he's, re he's fixed the scrolling issue. He's actually fixed it. It's, it's, it's nice and smooth now. So, what a nice piece of news. Anyway, I'm going to ask for one last boat of questions. Those are all the questions currently that have been asked. I did want to keep this broadcast to 30 minutes, it's now 35 minutes, so that's pretty good, considering the last four broadcasts are supposed to be 30 minutes and then got to an hour. So if there's any more questions, please, please, please just post them in the chat box and I shall repeat the question and, and, and invent an answer. And whilst I'm waiting for that, I just want to show you the stuff that I've been working on. Um, I did promise that I would show you. As you can see, it's called... Uh, Lee's Lure Editions, it's just a little notepad uh, reminder of what I've done and what I'm going to do. You've seen these two, Limb Hit and Reset Limb. You've also got uh, Get Entity in Zone. What that happen what happens, that you issue that command, so let's say you have a zone, a marker zone, and you add a script and attach it to that zone and use this command, Get Entity in Zone. What it does, it Permanently, well, it doesn't permanently. Every time this command is called, it scans the zone. And then if there's any entities inside that zone, it reports the entity number with this command. But not necessarily return from this command because it has to go away, do some work, and it come back a bit later with the answer. So you issue that command. So it says, right, check if the entities in the zone. And then you get the value back um, with this one G underscore entity E, entity in zone. And the entity index, the entity ID itself, will be stored inside that variable. And then you can use that for whatever you want. I did a little experiment where I actually created a, a zone of death. And I would throw barrels, exploding barrels. And as soon as they hit the zone, they would explode. So it's like a force field. So, And it can be used for lots of other things as well. Like somebody wanted to know, not when any entity entered, but when a character 
entered. Well, what you could actually do, and this is a pretty neat trick, is do get entity in zone as before, return the index as before, but then what you can do to know whether it's a character or not, it's actually pretty elegant. If you go to script bank and go to um, soldier, look, we have an array called AI soldier state E equals patrol. This is always used with sophisticated character AI. It's an extra array. So all you've got to do is when you get the index back, the entity index back from that check, just replace E with that index number. And then if it's not null, if it's not nil, you know, so squiggly equal nil, if it's not patrol or, or, or rather it is patrol or any other string, then you know it must be a character. And then you know that entity is a character and then you can do something about it. So that's, that's a pretty cool command. I'm quite happy with that. And just to scroll down a little bit more, people wanted some more globals so you could find out what the player's doing, what gun they're holding has already been sorted, but now you can find out what they're doing with that gun. Have they fired the gun? Have they actually tried to attack you with melee? How much ammo you've got, how many clips you've got left, whether you're zoomed in or not? Now, it's a bit cheated giving this knowledge to the enemy <laughs> because you can do all sorts of clever things like as soon as you move into zoom position, the enemy sort of moves out the way. Or they only fire back once you're reloading or something like that. And it's a little bit cheated, but it, it would create a much more interesting battle. So definitely play around with these if you want. So we're going to expose those. We have exposed those globals. They'll be available in the next update, and we're going to keep adding to it. I also had a request that it's great to be able to do a scan code, you know, to find out what keys pressed, but sometimes you want to be able to detect multiple keys that have been pressed at the same time. Not in any sort of arbitrary sense, but imagine, let's say, you had a part of your game where you could take control of a remote control car uh, because you needed to sort of press a button that's through a wall, and then the hole through the wall is really small, so the only thing that could fit through is a little remote control car. You would need to be able to simultaneously detect more than one key so you can actually move and turn at the same time, you see. So we've actually provided all the common ones that are available um, to the player you know, for player control. So that's the uh, the WASID keys, the R, F and C, space and shift. If you need any more keys, just let me know. We'll add them to the pile. The reason I didn't support all 250 keys is it would have got a little bit messy inside the lower um, command system. I didn't really want to add commands needlessly. So if you can make a good argument for it, fine. But if you just need a key that's not here, just let me know. We'll add it. And then all of its neighbours as well. And whilst I was at it, I thought, you know, whilst I'm on a roll, let's do some even more stuff. So you can now actually get mouse information in Lua as well. So imagine freezing the player and then popping up a, an inventory panel or a menu or some interactive game or anything you want. Now you can actually get the mouse coordinates. You can get whether you're using the mouse wheel, whether you're clicking the left button, right button, middle button, both buttons. Returns the internal mouse value for that. And in order to get that information, you, you start it off by doing the command activate mouse. And what that does, it detaches the mouse input from the player camera. So you're not looking around whilst moving the mouse around. So it basically stops the player from manipulating the camera. And then with activate mouse, these commands here, G mouse X, G mouse Y, G mouse wheel, G mouse click, are now active and you can get values from them. And then when you're finished, i.e. when you're leaving the menu and you're going back to your game, just issue deactivate mouse and that puts things back to null. So I'm really pleased with that. We go from what might have been a very difficult time trying to create in-game HUDs to one where you've pretty much now got the ability to uh, do menus and, and even get 2D games inside uh, Lua Script. The only thing you're missing, and I'm going to work on that tomorrow, is multiple images. So you can actually have effectively lots and lots of sprites on the screen and you can move them around by index. That's the last thing to do. That's the cherry on the cake and then you can add lots and lots of really cool Lua Scripts to control in-game uh, HUD stuff. So those are the stuff that's already been implemented uh, with more to come. And also, some additional information. As I was using these commands, I realized it wasn't always obvious how some of them work. So I'm going to be adding this information to our Lua document, uh, our documentation for Lua. So it gives you all the information that you should have. For example, uh, PLR visible, you'd think it would automatically report whether the value 
you know, if it's 1, the play's visible, if it's 0, it's not. Not necessarily so. That flag only updates when you call get entity player visibility. Not immediately obvious that you had to call that, so that's going into the help system. Similarly, set sound speed and set sound volume only works on the last sound that was played. It only works on the last sound, see, that was, was uh, given attention. So you'd have to do sort of like loop sound, and then you can do set sound speed or set sound volume. And that's a gotcha, some people would set that before, or think set sound volume was a master volume, and that's not the case. And as I mentioned above, entity in zone, you would actually need to uh, call the you know get entity in zone command before that value gets populated. And just as a reminder, because somebody wanted NPC in zone, but I gave it some thought and I realised, well, NPC is a subset of entities and wouldn't it be nice if you could directly interrogate entities rather than have too many fields being passed in all the time through Lua, because that at some point is going to start um, knocking on in terms of performance. So entity in zone gets you down to which entity you want to talk about and then you can interrogate the entity in other ways i.e. using the AI soldier states to figure out whether they're a character or not. So hopefully that filled in another 10 minutes of rabble, but also quite useful because these commands have been, waited, uh, been waiting on for a long time. It's great to have the ability to put them in and have the time to do it, and then I know for a fact that once this update goes out, a lot of Lua scripting activity will happen, and lots of menus, menus and interactive game elements will start popping up. I think it would be really, really cool. So, uh, so I'm just scrolling, got some more question marks actually, so it looks like whilst I've been rambling, a lot of people took me up on my uh, request for more questions. Keith asks, to add body armor you would create an entity of body armor and have that entity add a level of health to the character, correct? You could do it in a number of ways. I mean, yeah, I like the idea that you could assign another entity, just an entity but just a body armor to another entity, so a character walking around, and then you can actually keep moving this other entity every cycle to, to glue, if you will, to the character. Effectively, you'd be shooting the armour, you won't be shooting the fleshy bits underneath, and that way you could actually create an armour in that sense. But also, you could just have, if you've got your own character, you could just have the, uh, the character there, and if you've got armour, then you can set a particular flag, so your lower script will actually deal with the damage differently. So you could do that if you wanted to. But I think this is a big, big question. The idea of getting characters, customising them, setting their armour and attributes, and then having them do lots of different cool things in the game. I think we've got a long way to go to make that really easy for everybody. Right now, it's just the, the province of the Lua scriptor. Uh, is the beta upgrade still in function, or is it stopped? Um, it's still there. It's the same version as currently released publicly. We have a half a mind to have some build ready for the weekend, so you can play around with these cool things. I think we'd like that to happen. Obviously, in development, things can trip us up, but this is the goal. We would like to have, on Friday, a build that all you beta testers can check out, see if we've screwed anything up. So we would appreciate that feedback. Uh, Wormer asks, is there a way to read mouse clicks? Kind of like key pressed. Yeah, it's the uh, G underscore mouse click. So by default it's zero. When it's one, it means someone's holding down the left mouse button. If it's two, it means they're holding down the right mouse button. If it's three, it means they're holding down both left and right mouse buttons together. If it's four, it means holding down the middle button. And I'll stop there. Basically it's a binary progression, so you can figure it out just by showing the value on screen and then seeing what everything does. But a click, as in it's just one event that fires off. You just implement that yourself in Lua. You do if most click equals one and my flag is zero, then set my flag to one and then do what I want. And then when most click is zero, then set my flag to zero. Effectively, that logic will allow you to do clicks rather than a it's always held down activity. So that's how you would implement that in code. Uh, Irvana asks, is this the 30 minute Twitch or the full hour? <laughs> So, I mean, this may not be a joke everybody gets. Um, I just go on YouTube, look for Monty Python um, argument sketch. <laughs> this isn't arguing, it's contradiction. Um, and, and Dagger said it's just a slow watch. No, it's, it's a Gabby Lee. Yeah, it does like to talk that one. 
And uh, Keith confirms, I am on a roll. And Ravi says, is it a Rick roll? No, it's not a Rick roll. It's just Lee gabbing for another 10 minutes. Um, do we have another question? VRG, um, I will show some text story in game triggered by an object. The problem is to stop the player until the story is finished. Yeah, there's a command called freeze player. That will stop you pressing keys. It will stop you moving the mouse. The player stops you know, interfering with your story. And then when you've finished all the things that you want to do in your cutscene, your story element, then you can just unfreeze player and then you can carry on as normal. And uh, the command activate mouse still lets you, you know, it just freezes the camera mouse connectivity. It doesn't mess about with the keyboard and other, sp so effectively you can do activate mouse but then still move around if you needed that functionality. But freeze player freezes a lot. Uh, Mr. Dyak Skip Pull asks, "Why is uh, why this live didn't work when I watch ads? Why this live didn't work when I watch ads? Um, ads as in advertising didn't work. Um, yeah, the way Twitch works is when you first log on, Twitch will give you an advertisement of." an appreciable amount of seconds or minutes and then you can click in the bottom right skip and then once you click skip you would actually get onto the live broadcast and you can watch the remainder I actually add a minute or two buffer at the beginning so you don't miss the beginning uh, but sometimes advertisements can be quite long um, and if you miss the live broadcast altogether we immediately upload it to YouTube so after about 30 minutes you'll be able to get it from the Game Guru YouTube channel so you can find this broadcast and all the previous ones recorded for prosperity so I'm guessing that was an answer to the question may not be the right answer for the right question but it's an answer um, oh uh, VRG says the problem with freeze player is it also freezes my story on screen um, story I suppose you mean in things moving about like characters animating and stuff like that yeah then try the um, the activate mouse when we release this update that might be the thing you're after because it effectively allows you to sort of decouple some of the control system and then but still have your game on the screen when I think of story I think of someone flashing up like a 2d HUD image and then you read it and maybe trigger a sound effect as well and then when you finish reading it you press a key the HUD goes away then you carry on playing the game um, that's already been implemented in a game that we're going to add to Game Guru for the next update um, I was going to keep it a surprise but but what the hey we've actually got a big grab bag of new content uh, cartoon style with a whole game a really difficult game that you have to complete as well and it's not shooting it's, it's everything else, it's adventures and discovery and stuff like that and it's, it's really cool and it looks great and we're going to make it available for free it's going to be part of the Game Guru's default assets and a new game you can play and in there it makes heavy use of signposts where you run up to them, you read them it stops the game whilst you read it and then when you finish you can carry on so it's a really nice bit of logic and I'm sure you'll be able to use it in your own games when you check out the scripts and it really is just a case of using the scripts that are already there, just tweak them a little bit for your own purposes. So, uh, that looks like all the questions. It certainly wasn't half an hour, it's more like 15 minutes. But that's fine, as long as I don't run over the hour, that's the main thing. So hopefully you found this useful and entertaining, and more, more accurately, revealing. Because these have been commands on and off that have been wanted for some time. And now I've got time to actually put a little bit of energy into them, then it looks like we're going to go out in the, in the right direction. And like I said, we're not finished with the lower commands. We need more feedback. I can always dismiss them and lump them somewhere else and say we'll do that later. But, you know, half of these ideas that have been implemented have simply been submitted. I thought, actually, yeah, that's a really good idea. It's really quick to, to do. So that's why they're in. That's why they're now part of Game Guru. So please give me your feedback. It's absolutely vital to the growth of Game Guru. So until next Wednesday at 4pm, this is me saying goodbye. Thanks very much for your attention. And as usual, if you want to find a broadcast about a subject you're interested in, just go to the Game Guru forum, find the relevant post, and ask uh, in, in the form of a polite request. And if it's relevant and we've not already covered it, then I will cover it gladly. So until next Wednesday, either me or Ravi will be here to entertain you a week from now. 
But for right now, I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye.